Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hello Day. We're going to start this week out in Star Citizen, where CIG has announced the dates for this year's Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, and they're going to be running this year from November 18th to November 30th. And remember that we know that update 317.4 is going to launch just prior to this, so we're probably expecting just uh, a few days before that uh, to have the patch, maybe even on the day on the 18th, that's when uh, when 17.4 uh, is going to, be, uh, going to be launched. Together with the Expo in, uh, in traditional fashion, there's going to be a free fly event that means you can go and you can play star citizen for free even if you do not have the game and you can play for free during the entire period from the 18th to the 30th if you are interested in that you can go to getstarcitizen.dgua.com it will be in the at the top of the description and also pinned in the comment there we go you can sign up you can create an account there if you don't have one already um, not only will they give you access to the uh, to the expo, but it will also give you 5,000 extra starting credits. The cool thing about doing it here, doing the expo, is there is every day there's going to be a huge expo hall with a lot of ships on display, and you can rent all these ships for free. That means you can go, you can basically borrow the ships, you can fly them around. There's going to be more than 100 different flyable ships on display doing this expo, all of which you can go and just fly around to your heart's content and try them out, explore the ship interiors, all that stuff. I'll be posting links to set both to where you can sign up if you don't have an account already, and I'll also be posting a link to the official Robert Space Industry site um, regarding the event, where you can see more information about which manufacturers are on display, which days, and, and, and more information about it like that. Next, I wanna talk about this F1 Manager 2022 game that Frontiers launched very recently. It's not a game that I have covered at all. I think it's actually the first time I mentioned it on this channel. And it's not a game that I'm planning to cover at all in the future. But there has been a very weird move. So it is a game, of course, made by Frontier. And it's been there, like one of the new big things that we're going to launch. They're going to have this thing. It launched a little over two months ago. And last week, <laughs> I think it was last week, um, Frontier came out and said that they're putting the game on life support. And that was two months and two days after the game was released, the game is being put on live support. Basically what they're saying is that they're going to have a, one more update that's going to add a few things to the game. From there on in, there's going to be some minor updates, but there's going to be nothing that's going to have any significant impact on gameplay. Frontier's words, not mine. So the, I'm, I'm thinking bug fixes and, and just general maintenance of the game. Basically, they've said, yeah, two months of, of, of <laughs> post-launch development, that's all you get game is where it is, enjoy it or, or leave it. That has left a lot of people very angry, <laughs> understandably, because they bought this game full price, expecting to get a game that would be be managed and would, would be maintained. Um, but nope, nope, two months and then that's it, it's out. One of the things they also said was the reason why they're pulling resources away from the game is because they want to focus on other F1 manager projects. Um, which may seem odd that you have a game that's clearly is the, I'm not, I don't understand or not follow the game, so I don't understand the box that people are mentioning when you read about it. But it seems weird if you have a game that's still full of box and you just move on to build the next one instead of like fixing the one you already have. But I think what Frontier is trying to do here is they're trying to get in and get the F1 manager title to be kind of the same as what you would have with like the FIFA games or the Madden games, right? Where there's basically a new version of the game coming out every single year. And it's also in the title, F1 Manager 2022. So there's likely going to be an F1 Manager 2023. And that means that I think that's what they're aiming for. Same like model where you launch a new brand new game every year and then people have to go and pay full price if they want to have the latest and greatest version of it, which is Basically going to be like a rehashed version of the old one where you just fixed a few bugs, upgraded the graphics, added some extra tracks maybe, or updated the tracks to be more correct of what do I know. Make minor changes and then push that out as a brand new game. Um, but yeah, it, it was just, I was so perplexed when I was reading this, like two months, that's, that's nothing. But yeah, that's apparently how it's going to be. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to get an announcement of uh, F1 Manager 2023 very, very soon. Okay, moving on to live streams. So listen up, because those of you guys who've been following the live streams, usually there's going to be a few changes this week and also some changes going forward. Changes this week, and only this week, is that I'm moving the live stream from Tuesday to Wednesday. And that's because on Tuesday we have this like 
general election thing going on in our, uh, here in Denmark, and uh, we're going to go to some of our neighbors, we're going to watch it, and we're going to have dinner at their place, stuff like that. So doing some 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 other, other non-YouTube things on Tuesday, so live stream is moved to Wednesday instead. That's just only this week. Next week, it will be back to the usual spot on Tuesday. Almost, because we've also here in Europe now swapped over um, away from daylight saving over it. So from before I was GMT plus two, now I'm GMT plus one. And that means that you might have been used to the live streams for the last half year. They've been running at seven o'clock GMT, seven o'clock in game time. That is now swapping, swapping over to be eight o'clock in game time or eight o'clock GMT, eight PM GMT. That means the next live stream is going to be at Wednesday and it's going to be at eight o'clock GMT. And next week, it's going to be Tuesday at 8 o'clock GMT, and that's the spot it will have going forward. That was a lot about when. Um, Topic-wise, I uh, I think the plan will be to go into Elite, do some uh, some exploration. I know we did Elite last week as well, but I, uh, I've been having that exploration itch lately. kind of want to get back out there and explore some stars. And also because, as I said, we have the um, the expo coming very soon in Star Citizen, and that means when that happens, you will see a lot of Star Citizen live streams from me towards the end of November. Um, so just to give Elite Dangerous a little bit of love <laughs> before it goes on uh, on the back burner, then we'll see. I mean, there's also the big event going on at the end of November in Elite, so it's going to be a busy, busy period with both the uh, the expo and the whatever event Frontier has for us at the end of November. So that's going to be very busy for me. Tomorrow, at least, it's going to be expiration. We're going to head back out on my uh, on my expiration alt. And we're going to be heading uh, heading back out of the core, heading back out um, of the center region of the bubble. Um, taking a bit of a detour, but slowly, uh, over the next like months or so, I'm going to be um, moving my way back towards Colonia. It's not going to be <laughs> that soon, but eventually I'll be, I'll be back in Colonia. Hope we'll see you guys on Wednesday at 8 o'clock GMT, live streamed as usual on YouTube and on Twitch. Thanks for watching, and also next time, I will see you guys in space.